working? Mm -hmm. We're looking at this um, yard long photo, an original from the 369th Infantry Band. And um, it's getting ready to pass through my hands onto some other hands. And you were making some very interesting comments about the, the importance of the 369th um, <clears throat> um, Band and their. Um, uh, some of their historical contributions to um, African American classical music. Could you um, give us a brief comment? Very, well, sure. <coughs> the the um, 369th, also known as the Hellfighters Band, mm -hmm. uh, were both a combat unit and a musical unit. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And they were decorated uh, as being particularly effective as, as fighters mm -hmm. in the war, uh, predominantly in Paris. Mm -hmm. But their even more famous for introducing jazz at the time called rag mm -hmm. kind of music mm -hmm. uh, to, to Europe. Mm -hmm. And they were the toast mm -hmm. of Paris. Mm -hmm. And in fact, when they got back uh, to Harlem, they walked up Fifth, they had a parade for them mm -hmm. going up, uh, starting in Midtown, Fifth Avenue, but going all the way up to Harlem, mm -hmm. on Fifth Avenue, led by James Reese Europe, one of the first. Uh, kind of, I, I guess you could say, uh, one of the first big bands, you know. Mm -hmm. And so, not in the in the Fletcher Henderson sense, but in the sense of uh, introducing African American classical music mm -hmm. in a large format, even mm -hmm. larger than the classic big band, mm -hmm. you know, that that came through Fletcher Henderson and Duke and Count Basie and so forth. Now, was this during the war, pre-war? This or is during was the war. During the war. What during the war. Where were the venues? So what venue? Will, you know of? Yeah, uh, in Paris, I don't know the name. They they were doing parades, mm. they were playing outside, mm. right? So this is in the days, you know, the early days of jazz. It was more of an outdoor than it was a parlor function. Mm -hmm. Like even in New Orleans, some of you know river boats, mm -hmm. picnics, funerals, mm -hmm. right? So they come from that tradition as well in terms mm -hmm. of how to present. Mm -hmm. The music and also a military outfit mm -hmm. is set up for out, outdoor mm -hmm. music, mm -hmm. which is where most of the first jazz instrumentalists got the instruments mm -hmm. were, were from pawn shops after wars. Mm -hmm. So this was during the First World War. Um, interestingly enough, this is during the First World War, not the Second. That's correct. All right. So this band here are these uh, World War One or World War Two? This would have to be World War One. Why would you say it have to be? Was the three sixty did the Hellfighters have a band during World War Two also? Well, not 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 to my knowledge. Oh. This, this was something that was led by Europe, who unfortunately didn't live to the Second World War. Mm -hmm. He did. He started the Clef Club mm -hmm. up uh, in New York. You know, mm -hmm. the first uh, kind of. Uh, uh, music organization mm -hmm. uh, run for and by black musicians. This was also started by James Reese Europe. Now, after Europe, did he have uh, someone who stepped into his shoes in the 369? Because they were a military outfit. The reason I'm asking you that is because I, I know um, some of my grandparents and some of the other elders in my family in particular were um, in the 369, not in the band necessarily, mm -hmm. and the 379. Um, do you think it faded out during World War Two, or are you saying you just you you have just, a, you're talking about the beginning of it? I'm just talking about the beginning. Okay. Of it. I, okay. Don't, I don't know what right. happened after Europe. Right. Uh, after James Reese Europe, that is. Mm. I'm, I'm not sure. You know, he he was killed by his drummer. What? Yeah. Mm. He was stabbed to death. And how? I believe so. Then he made it through the war. He did make it through the war, though. <laughs> he didn't make it through this war. He didn't make it through the, through, through the war of oppression, <clears throat> you know. You know, also the psychology of warriors, um, African warriors uh, playing this music. It must have been interesting what was on their minds, because when you look at the traditions such as the Asafo music of the Franti people, which is the warrior music that they play when they would go into battles traditionally, they would have certain songs to tease the enemy, to incite um, mm -hmm. their fellow um, comrades to you know, to uh, maximum strength and value, you know, mm -hmm. and <clears throat> and also for certain spiritual, you know, reason they were called upon the ancient war deities, you know, for protection when they went to defend um, their families out there or, you know, to, to fight. Right. And I'm wondering what these men who were definitely victims of racism back at home 
and definitely victims of racism in the wars because a lot of times they're put on the front line. What was their psychology? I mean, um, you know, because our music, um, jazz, or, you know, African music here in America, um, coming out of the Congo Square tradition, you know, yeah. you know, coming from spasm bands all the way into this, what was, what do you think they were thinking? Well, they were, well, I think you're touching upon it. Mm -hmm. I mean, these, these men were warriors. Mm -hmm. um, they were aware of the double-edged uh, sword of their position as, as infantry in the United States Army, in a, in a country where they didn't have voting rights, mm -hmm. where they didn't enjoy many civil rights, where mm -hmm. they were un, 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 uh, unambiguously oppressed. Mm -hmm. right? Uh, and to be in, in a place in Europe where they were afforded a kind of civility mm -hmm. uh, and humanity that was denied them at home, mm -hmm. right? So that was always something when you read the comments of the people in the band, they talk about the civility with which they were treated there and the adoration that they received for this innovative music, mm -hmm. right? So. So, so there's two things. There's, there's the basic human level, but then there is the recognition of artistry, creativity, of cultural contribution, right? Something that, that really Africans are still struggling to attain mm -hmm. uh, in the places that they call home, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So here they were fighting a war, uh, actually being an ally for another country and mm -hmm. being effective for them and being valorized as men in the sense that men was understood in those times of valor, mm -hmm. strength, mm -hmm. uh, warrior nature, and, and the like, and as intellectual producers mm -hmm. of culture. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. And so there was all of this. And he had the audacity to organize, to create an uh, organization for help officers once they reached to New York, where they were also well received. So mm -hmm. the kind of tremendous uh, force that these people have is kind of is is all is, is is somewhat difficult to realize, mm -hmm. seeing how degraded things can be in the, mm -hmm. in the current mm -hmm. context. But mm -hmm. these were these were men of great achievement, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. they knew it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it looks like it was quite um, a large um, orchestra. It's also. humongous. <laughs> it's yeah. humongous. <laughs> That's like three big bands, <laughs> <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. it's humongous. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, when you look at, listen to the rec recordings of the James Reese Europe band that they made in New York, mm -hmm. they are here, you know, they had like mandolins, mm -hmm. strings, horns, you know, just like this kind of massive, mm -hmm. massive orchestration. Mm -hmm. I wonder if they were collecting instruments along the uh, military campaign. You know, as they um, move from town to town. And and I, 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 I don't know. That's yeah. an interesting, <laughs> interesting question. <laughs> Where did they get their reads? You know, yeah. Yeah, those, you know, those are historical it. questions. Yes. Mm -hmm. Of some import. Yeah. <laughs> you know. yeah. Well, you know, it's ironically, uh, reads the best reads come from Cain, grown in Navarre region in France. Mm -hmm. Right. Ironically enough. Mm -hmm, yeah. mm -hmm. What was his background? Um, uh, Europe? Yes. He was a college educated man, you know. Um, he was, you know, what, what we would have called in those days a race man, a mm -hmm. uh, person, you know, who had a certain amount of militancy, mm -hmm. you know. Um, this is before the Double V uh, campaign of the 1940s. But mm -hmm. Still, there was every uh, hope that, you know, the demonstrated valor in the war mm -hmm. would grant uh, uh, black people a mm -hmm. different status mm -hmm. at home. Mm -hmm. You know, after all, they were supposedly making the world safe for democracy.